Photograph number 25 depicts a weed sprinkler, number 446. It was 38 feet, two and a half inches long. And uh, it was equipped, of course, with Westinghouse uh, air brake equipment. And this was used, of course, for weed sprinkling, and it was pulled by either a stubby uh, a freight motor or by a line car or regular freight motor, and the purpose of it was to fill it with weed spray, of course, to kill weeds along the right-of-way. Photograph number 26 appears to have been taken in Lorain, Ohio. I cannot read the number on the car, but the car appears to be a, a, a Brill Bernie with a seating capacity of 28 and a length of 27 feet, about nine and a half inches. Uh, this car had two Westinghouse 58A traction motors and a Westinghouse 63 type controller it was equipped with semi-automatic air, rail trucks, and a 26 inch wheel diameter and weighed 17,700 pounds. But because I cannot identify this car definitely by number, I cannot identify it definitely as the type. Certainly it looks like a Bernie, a uh, car. It is a car built by Brill, a Brill car, a Bernie-type car. Photograph number 27 depicts a flat car, and this was taken at the Sandusky shops, and the car number is 409. Now, this car was formerly a Jewett car, one of the fleet that was delivered in 1918, but in 1926, this car struck a gasoline truck at Genoa, Ohio, and was destroyed with fire. And rather than rebuild it, the Lakeshore Electric cut it down and made a flat car out of it. So you know, the only real sign that this had ever been anything other than a flat car is the anti-climber devices that you'll notice at the front end of the car. But this photograph here was taken, of course, at the Sandusky car shop, and this was formerly Jewett Steel Car Number 175, destroyed by fire in 1926 at Genoa, Ohio. Photograph number 28 depicts a plate girder bridge, but I cannot identify definitely this location. It is possible that this location is east of Norwalk, uh, near Wells Road, where it crossed over Route 61. But again, this is not definite and should not be taken as definite. I cannot with certainty identify this plate girder bridge. I have a list of the plate girder bridges, but there were several plate girder bridges, and this could be any one of the number of those bridges. Photograph number 29. This shows the bridge over the Huron River at Monroeville, Ohio. And in the deep left background is the feed mill of the Herman McLean Company. The small structure in the foreground, in the left foreground, was the former Star Creamery Company. The tower that you see in almost the center of the photograph is a water tank of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. And the building with the platform uh, sloping out from it uh, on the opposite side of the river was the creamery station. And from here, the farmer shipped cream. That platform was to load cream into uh, the freight motors and baggage cars of the Lakeshore Electric. One of the companies was the Telling Bell Vernon Company that I remember very well. And of course, in the background is the interurban station at Monroeville. It was not only the station, but also the substation. 
And it still stands and is kept in good repair by the village of Monroeville. They use it today as a place to store their village trucks for the street department and for their sign department. And as a boy, I spent a lot of time around this station and got to know a great deal about the Lakeshore Electric. And even after Lakeshore Electric was abandoned, this building uh, was used by the Lakeshore Electric lineman, Val Mahalik, who told me many tales of his experiences up and down the Lakeshore. But of the buildings depicted in the photograph here today, some are gone. The Seaman McLean Company, uh, pardon, the Herman McLean Company has been much modified. The steel water tank of the Baltimore and Ohio is gone. And within the last year, the old creamery station has been destroyed. But the bridge piers still stand out prominently in the Huron River at Monroeville where this photograph was taken. Photograph number 30 shows transformer car number 408. This car was used to transport transformers up and down the Lakeshore electric system. And it was 36 feet, 10 inches long, was what we would call a center well car. Had American Car and Foundry Company brakes and uh, had a wheel diameter of 33 inches and weighs 37,500 pounds. Graph number 31 shows stubby work motor number 405. This car was used to perform all sorts of work duties, uh, shop switching, uh, uh, work train service, etc. And it was equipped with two General Electric 57A type 50 horsepower traction motors with GEK 35 controls and had Westinghouse automatic air. And it was equipped with McGuire trucks with 33 inch diameter wheels and I have no weight of this car. This car, number 405, was out of service for quite a number of years, was certainly out of service at abandonment, and may even have been out of service at the time that this photograph was taken. The raised trolley, however, would indicate that this car was in service at the time, but at the time of abandonment, it was not in service. Photograph number 31 depicts a car that was quite likely used to transport uh, gravel ballast to be used in ballasting the railroad. I have no information on this car other than it has a capacity of 60,000 pounds and appears to be approximately uh, a 40 foot car. But that is all the information I have on it. It's obviously equipped with automatic air brakes. Other than that, I have nothing. Photograph number 31 depicts wreck car number 407. This car was built, of course, for the purpose of wrecking. And while it's not equipped with a windlass or a crane, it did carry all kinds of tools, chains, etc. that was necessary for rerailing cars. And the wood that you see piled up on the deck of that car was used for this very purpose, for the purpose of rerailing. Now uh, this was put under car wheels when they were derailed and the car was pulled up on it by wreck car 407. Now wreck car number 407 of course uh, had a steel frame and a wood cab that was 40 feet 11 inches long. It had four Westinghouse type 76 75 horsepower electric motors. It had a General Electric K64D type controller, Westinghouse automatic air and the trucks were built by a Brill, and uh, they are Brill Type 27, 36 inch wheel diameter, and this car weighed 69,500 pounds in working order. This car, 407, was almost always assigned to pull uh, wreck crane number 410. Photograph number 33 depicts work car number 403. And this was used in all sorts of work train service. They might take it out to pull their ballast cars, spread ballast, etc. Anything that was out of the ordinary. It was not a, equipped, however, as a wreck car. This was just a simple work car. And it is a car equipped with a wood cab on a steel frame. It had a length of 34 feet, 8 inches and had four General Electric 57A 50 horsepower 
uh, traction motors was equipped with a GEK 35, that means General Electric uh, K35 GR2 type controls, Westinghouse automatic air, and uh, Brill trucks, 27 inch wheel, 20, Brill type 27 trucks, and it had a wheel diameter of 36 inches. Photograph number 34 shows work car 402. This car was assigned to the Lorraine Street Railway. And the, again, you have a, a just a plain a work a motor with a steel frame and a wood cab. Uh, 402 was 34 feet 5 inches long. It had four General Electric 57A 50 horsepower uh, traction motors. It was equipped with a GEK 35 GR2 type controller, Westinghouse automatic air, Brill number 27 type trucks with a 33 inch wheel diameter. Well, number 35 depicts a freight box of the Lakeshore Electric Railroad. I cannot ascertain the number, cannot discern it, but this car was an end-door car as well as a side-door car, and the, the Lakeshore Electric actually pioneered in transporting automobiles and, and these cars. They could load them from the end, and this was an advantage that most steam railroads did not have. They could not load by the, in the end. They had to load through the side door, but these cars could be loaded by the end door. The photograph, I believe, was probably taken at the Sandusky shops. Number 36 depicts a Lakeshire Electric box-type car. It is the same as an ordinary box car. The difference is the small capacity, which was roughly around 25 ton. This is a side-door car, not equipped for end loading. And if you'll notice the wide swing that of the drawbar, the, the, the drawbars on these cars would swing much farther than the drawbars on the steamroad cars. They had to because of the sharp radius of the curves that was inherent in the city streets where they had to traverse uh, very sharp curves with the boxcar. So therefore, the drawbar had to swing very wide. Not uncommon sometimes for the, uh, the drawbar to swing so far that to pull the air hoses apart. Number. 37. This depicts the freight motor number, um, sorry, work car number 401. This is work car number 401. This car number 401 was a work motor with a steel frame and a wood cab. It was 40 feet 11 inches long. Had four W76 type traction motors of 75 horsepower each had a GE, General Electric that is, K64D type controls, General Electric K64D type controls, Westinghouse automatic air, Baldwin trucks, 36 inch wheels, and weighed 73,600 pounds. After the Lakeshore Electric was abandoned, this car number 401 was sold, sold to the power plant at Ballville, Ohio, and uh, I'm not certain of just what year it was scrapped, but I think sometime in the uh, late 50s or early 60s. But uh, this car continued in service long, long after the rest of the Lakeshore Electric cars were gone. Photograph number 38 depicts a snow sweeper. And the snow sweeper, the Lakeshore Electric had three of these. And this one is B, and uh, B was assigned to the Fremont car barns. It was a Fremont snow, uh, snow sweeper. Uh, a was the Lorraine snow sweeper, B was Fremont, and C was Sandusky. Uh, they were double end controls. They were 28 feet 10 inches long. They had three General Electric, three GE 57 type uh, traction motors, uh, 50 horsepower each. Each traction motor developed 50 horsepower. And they were equipped, of course, in they double end cars with two General Electric GR2 type controllers, and they did not have automatic brakes. They were hand brakes. There were no air brakes on them. They were hand brakes. Had McGuire trucks with 33-inch diameter wheels.